Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Women and Children First, the virtual edition. My name is Sarah Hollenbeck. Um, I'm the co-owner here of Women and Children First. We are one of the last remaining feminist book clubs left in the United States. And we are so delighted to host this afternoon virtual chat in celebration of the Queen's English, the LGBTQIA plus dictionary uh, by Chloe Davis. Here it is. Look at this beautiful, beautiful book. And we are thrilled to have Amanda Bruton here to interview Chloe. So welcome, Amanda. Um, we begin our virtual events as we begin our events held here in the bookstore with a land acknowledgement. So please join me in acknowledging that the land in which the bookstore stands is the unceded territory of the Peoria, the Potawatomi, the Miami, and the Sioux people. There are over 75,000 indigenous people living in Illinois, and we strive to recognize and honor native literature, history, and community. And we encourage all of you to learn more about land acknowledgements and why we do them. A good place to start is land landacknowledgements.ca. Um, Women and Children Thirst is now open um, at limited capacity, and we do require a mask when you come in the store, so um, just keep that on a little bit longer. Um, and we also continue to offer curbside pickup and we ship anywhere in the United States. For now, most of our events are staying in virtual space. So we hope you'll join us um, back on our podcast channel tomorrow um, for an, a conversation with Vanessa Visoka and Melissa Fibos. Uh Vanessa has a new novel that is such a good summer read called The Great Offshore Grounds that I think you'll really enjoy. If you have a question for Chloe, please drop it in the Ask the Question box that's located at the bottom of your screen. Also, there's a handy Buy the Book button at the bottom of the screen that will lead you to womenandchildrenfirst.com to buy this incredible book. On to the main event. Chloe O. Davis is a proud black bisexual woman and debut author who works in the entertainment industry in New York. She's a graduate of Hampton University and Temple University, and she has centered her creative platform on amplifying the narratives of Black culture and heightening the awareness of the LGBTQIA plus community. In addition to performing at premier theaters across the country, such as the New York City Center, the Apollo Theater, and the Kennedy Center, among others, she has appeared on PBS Great Performances. In tandem with performing, Chloe O. Davis has spent 15 years researching, writing, and creating the Queen's English. She believes this dictionary is a starting point for important conversations about inclusivity, sexuality, gender expression, and identity. Amanda Bruton is an actor, coach, teacher, and the woman you think you know on the small screen. She lives with her wife, several plants, and a brand spanking the new tiny human in New York City. Um, I just have to say, this whole vibe of this book from A to Z is so joyful and so celebratory, and I think this is just such a beautiful culmination of five months to spend this afternoon with the two of you. Um, and also, the design of this book is so gorgeous. Um, it looks beautiful on a bookshelf, and I hope that folks in the audience will consider adding it to their bookshelves. And also, the the con or the in usage conversation <laughs> examples of each word made me laugh out loud so many times. So it's funny, it's beautiful, it's informative. Um, please join me in welcoming. Chloe Odegas and Amanda. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for having us um, in this space. Um, and Amanda, thank you for being in conversation with me. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I am Chloe O. Davis, and this um, is my pride, but this is the Queen's English. And 
Um, it is the LGBTQI plus dictionary of lingo and colloquial phrases. It celebrates over 800 terms used to describe our collective gay and queer experiences. It's inclusive. It's a celebration of the spectrum of identity. Um, it's a celebration of the diversity of identity. Um, but I created this dictionary uh, to truly affirm, bring visibility and celebrate you know, who we are, um, that we are incredible, we're dynamic, we're different. And it's because of our differences that makes us all so unique and makes you know, the heartbeat of humanity uh, continue. So thank you for tuning in um, and celebrating this last day of pride with the Queen's English. But yes, it's colorful. <laughs> Um, it's fun, it's engaging, but it's truly a resource that dives into the important conversations around inclusivity and diversity, sexual orientation, gender expression, and gender identity. So thank you, everyone. And Amanda, thank you again for being here with me. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. Um, it's a joy. And for those of you who don't know, um, Chloe and I met I won't say how many years ago now, <laughs> but it's been, it was several years ago. We were performing together on an international tour and we worked together for like 18 months. And during that time, um, our particular tour was very special. And we, all of those folks really became like a family. And I'm not just saying that we really, we really had something special. And so you spend a lot of time together. And I remember Chloe telling me back then the idea for this book, and she was already doing um, the research and putting all of these things together. And she, if you know Chloe personally, you know she has such a love um, for conversation and she's also got tremendous curiosity. Um, she, and she's just like, she'll ask a question and then she's got a bunch of follow-up questions. And you're like, she, she wants to know and understand. And I was like, who more perfect to create this dictionary? And, and I've just been blown away since I, I got my, you know, I bought it, I pre-ordered it. So I've had this book for a while, um, but I've been taking an extra close look at it these last few weeks um, as we were getting ready to have this conversation today and having conversations with other people, both you know within the queer community and outside of the queer community. Um, and everybody is just really taken, like you just take a, even if you just take a, a quick like cursory glance through, you're like, whoa there is you you flip through three pages and i guarantee you're going to learn something you didn't know before i don't i don't care who you are um and so it was just it's just really profoundly joyful as sarah said um thorough and and really really special so congratulations chloe like this is it's just a a really wonderful thing and it's a great great resource to have so anyway oh, thank er you thank you for that <laughs> amanda and yeah. of course sharing that story but yes you know, Amanda and I definitely go way back, and I've actually been working on this dictionary for 15 years. So Amanda yeah. um, met me along the way on this journey, and <laughs> you know, yep. I also appreciate Amanda because um, Amanda and her wife. Um, I have um, something called Inside the Queen's English, and we actually kind of go inside of the words and how words move us. And you know, I like to say that um, it's not about our labels, it's just about words that truly help us articulate our identity. And so we powered through some of the words that um, felt close to both Amanda and Kristen and, of course, baby Frankie. Um, baby and we Frankie. had a beautiful conversation <laughs> about, you know, words and identity. And so thank you again for always, you know, being so supportive and and also being a part of Inside the Queen's English. I'm it's an honor. <laughs> um, so I want to start off by talking a little bit about um, the introduction of your book, which is really, really beautifully written. And, and really, we start to dive in right away about your inspiration for writing the book, um, the purpose of the book, how people can use the book all of these things, the, the importance of the historical context, which is a big one, appropriation, all of those things. Um, and I feel like you're you're very clear about the history of terms from the Black and Latinx gay and trans people in, in particular. And you go on to say that this book is not permission to use this language flippantly. It is meant to be an educational tool, a conversation starter, and a celebration of the history of gay quote, coded language, queer spaces, and the LGBTQIA plus experience. Mm -hmm. What I love, what I love most, is that you include these usage notes 
throughout to give mm -hmm. additional context with everything. Can you talk to me a little bit about what your intention was with those usage notes? Right. Oh, well, thank you so much um, for <laughs> diving in. So a little bit about the dictionary. I'm just kind of going to put the book right in front of me. But you Do see it. these little red uh, little marks, right? And again, you see that the dictionary is, is colorful. Um, it's engaging. Just like a dictionary, you'll have your term, your part of speech, um, your definitions, plural, right? Because there are a myriad of ways we can use and define a, uh, a word, a term, an expression. And I wanted to make sure that I gave validity to um, as many definitions as possible. And even if it's not in here, mm -hmm. it's still valid. Um, because mm -hmm. of the etymology of a word and how it changes over time. There's also the usage example, um, and that's what Sarah mm -hmm. was talking about. I really wanted to yeah. dive in and bring the nuance of the word, right? So when I talk about diversity earlier, you know, even when we say those words LGBTQIA+, right? Lesbian, gay, bisexual, mm -hmm. transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, plus, plus is identifying those other non-heteronormative identities that are not yeah. always in the in the forefront in the in the light right so when we talk about being right. pansexual or pangender when we talk about being agender or asexual um or aromantic um poly you know there's so many by gender there's yeah. so many identities and i just wanted to make sure that that diversity was represented in the dictionary and also the intersectionality of that diversity so what's that mm -hmm. big word well you know it's about you know those other layers of who we are you know our race our age, our ability, you know, um, our nationality, our culture, you know, all of those things really truly make us who we are, right? It's not just about mm -hmm. our gender identity or our gender expression or our sexual orientation or our sexual anatomy. Mm -hmm. It's more, it's yeah. more layered. So um, a big part of the dictionary is called the usage note. And I thought, you know, what was really important is that I number one, um, identified where that language came from, you know, the diversity. So, you know, I would say, you know, the usage note, it would say like this word originated in, you know, the lesbian community, but has been appropriated by the larger LGBTQI plus community and mainstream, or this word um, originated in black American culture, but commonly used mm -hmm. in the gay and queer, um, black gay and queer spaces and you know, has been appropriated by mainstream, or mm -hmm. this word is commonly used in the transgender, gen non gender nonconforming, and non-binary communities, right? So, so the usage note gives you more information as to, you know, who originated it, you know, who created it, mm -hmm. who commonly uses that. And I think that's really mm -hmm. important. That was one of the reasons why I really wanted to create this dictionary. Number one, mm -hmm. I wanted to bring visibility to the spectrum of identity, period. I just wanted to bring visibility because being, you know, a bisexual woman, I just didn't find resources that were that was, you know, could articulate my journey or that could help mm -hmm. me even figure out where I am in my evolution of identity. Yeah. I didn't find those, yeah. let alone find something that was written in a focus that identified my blackness. Right. We have to understand yeah. that who we are um, depicts our journey, you know, whether we like it or not, but, but it's a, it is a beautiful experience, right? It makes us unique and individual and our contributions to, to humanity and to the society, uh, more impeccable, but having a resource that dived into language that was familiar with me, I wasn't, I didn't find a lot. And so when I talk about particularly the ballroom scene, like you said, the black and Latinx, gay, queer, um, trans community, mm -hmm. and we talk about the ballroom scene, which originated, um, in the late 1960s, um, early 1970s in New York City and Harlem. But it was a space that was created um, for, um, you know, black and Latinx, um, gay, queer, trans people to, you know, have a place to belong, have a place to feel empowered, you know, have a place that was safe to stand firm in their identity, being a person of color, being someone who is trans or queer or gay, right? We have to understand that just like in 2021, back then, you know, homophobia, transphobia, racism was was, was there, was thriving. So building a uh, community that helped affirm who we were was important. And so the thing about language is we create language because we need to articulate our journeys. We need to articulate who we are because, for instance, mainstream or, you know, um, uh, whatever the dominant view is in this world and society has not brought our focus and lens into into that narrative right so we create language to do so and language also builds uh culture you know 
So another part of usage notes, um, you know, I will say like this term originated in the ballroom scene and has been appropriated mm -hmm. by, you know, the larger LGBTQIA plus community and mainstream. And more particularly, yeah. if you know about RuPaul Drag Race or Pose or Legendary, um, and even if you're yeah. in the community and you've watched the documentary um, Paris is Burning, you know those words like read and shade. Um, yep. over, fierce, slay, beat, right? These words, yep. we know them, but we don't necessarily yep. know where they come from. And I think that was really important that I articulated, you know, the history of where these words mm -hmm. come from, who created them, mm -hmm. right? Give appropriate credit to where credit is due. And, you right. know, a lot of these words that have been now taken and so embedded into now mainstream or pop culture, however you want to call it, it's embedded right. now, so it's lost its value, it's lost its history, it's lost its meaning because of, whether we like it or not, appropriation. And I feel like that's unfair. Yeah. So, you know, whether I was talking about the ballroom scene or I was talking about, you know, the lesbian community when we talk about, you know, butch femme binaries, um, when, you know, we go deeper into, um, you know, just other popular language, now popular, but that comes from, you know, the gay and queer community. I wanted to make sure that we know where it comes from and go deeper to say what community yeah. created it, if I could find that research. So that's the importance of the usage notes. Another element of the usage notes, um, and I think I'm going to read a little bit about que the word queer. Yeah. But another thing about the usage notes, I, I had to also let you know the etymology of the word and how things have changed over time, particularly on the word queer. Because queer was once derogatory, and to some, is still derogatory, right? Right. Um, but over time, yeah. but over time has uh, was reclaimed, and I'll read a little bit about that. And now we see the younger generations, you know, Generation Z and some millennials using queer because queer, you know, is this catch-all uh, phrase to either identify identify someone who is non cisgender or someone, you know, mm -hmm. who is just non heterosexual, right? Um, mm -hmm. But to say to say that information, to say that this term, you know, was once derogatory, but has been reclaimed by some members of the community, but could still be derogatory to some. To have that extra information, I think, is really, really important because, mm -hmm. like you said, you know, this book is not for us to use flippantly. Anyone, you know, no. it is for us to learn. It's for us. First, it's for us to celebrate, celebrate our history, right. history, gay history, lesbian history, bisexual history, trans history to celebrate our history in all of its beautifulness, right? It's first to do that, to celebrate. It's to affirm and it's to empower. That's what this dictionary is for. But it's also to help us educate ourselves on, again, who we are as humans. Like it was it was very, I say this in my introduction, you know, um, I, I've, during this process of 15 years, even before, I can see how my identity has changed from, you know, being, you know, hetero flexible to bi curious to being, you know, bisexual, but being a semi closeted about it, right? Because I don't feel com <laughs> I didn't, or I didn't feel comfortable in in more um, heterosexual spaces, heteronormative spaces, mm -hmm. feeling like I could be myself, you know, feeling yeah. like I would be ridiculed or demeaned or you know those things. So, you know, when I felt safe, I could be me. But when I didn't feel safe, you know, I wasn't, and that's still the case for a lot of people. Um, yeah. You know, I have grown and evolved to, to stand firm in who I am and can speak out about it. And I think that's, you know, that's important because I don't know who else I'm helping, you know. Um, and then I could also identify with being demisexual, having, you know, being allosexual is someone who is, you know, has sexual yearnings and desires. Someone who's asexual is someone who does not or have lack of, you yeah. know, sexual yearnings and desires. And then demis right in the middle, you know, and it's like. I do, I, I will have sexual yearnings and desires, but I have to be really intimately and emotionally connected with someone, right? So just learning more about myself through this research process yep. has been incredible, right? Um, and so reading a little bit of, in the introduction, I'm gonna flip, um, yeah. and if you see, I'm gonna put it right in my face, but there's a little box here, and it says on the word queer, so I'm gonna read it. Great. Queer was once a derogatory slur for homosexuals. By the 1980s, HIV and AIDS activists were determined to reclaim the term as a badge of honor for the LGBTQI plus community. Since the 80s, the younger LGBTQIA plus generations have adopted queer 
as an umbrella term for anyone who identifies as lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, two-spirit, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, non-binary, gender non-conforming, and or non-heteronormative. So that's a little bit of a usage about, you know, queer, like how queer has evolved and changed um, and what it means, you know, in 2021 and what it kind of meant before the 1980s. However, it, mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't dismiss, you know, the history. Right. And we have to still be yeah. open and honest and say that just because some people use the word queer doesn't mean all people feel comfortable using that word. And that's something I yep. really want to make relevant in this dictionary. Not all people who identify within the community use this language and they don't have to, you know, and we don't assume that, you know, they have to either. You know, this is a collection of terms from individuals all over this country, you know, um, all over, you know, the country who is who, who's in the community who, you know, um, have coined this language, uses this language because it's empowering, you know. Um, so that's just a little bit about um the reasoning for the usage notes. It's its really yeah. to give more information on the term because it wasn't enough to just have, you know, no. the definitions. And even there's a synonym that I put in there. It's like, you know, one more info, think. And there's there's a synonym that yep. you can easily connect with the term. And there is the usage notes, but the, the usage um, and the usage examples, but the usage notes are very, very important. It goes in to give you that you know, um, why it, why it's here, who created it, um, yeah. is it pejorative, is it a stereotype, you know, um, yep. should you not use it if you're not in the community? It's like all of that information. It's kind of like that. Right. And it's in red because it's like, alert, alert, read me, you know. Um, yes. <laughs> important info. Important <laughs> all info. All of it's important, but like, yeah. don't miss this. Yeah. Exactly. And then there's also the did you know. The did you knows are great as well because yep. it, it's like a deeper dive into uh you know more history you know with the word so i you know a lot of people ask like is this a dictionary or is this like an encyclopedia or whatever i'm like it's absolutely a dictionary but yeah it's like a hybrid um and it's creative and it's colorful and it's engaging so it's chloe's style of a (laughs) of a dictionary (laughs) of a dictionary encyclopedia Mm -hmm. encyclopedias which are things like we don't we don't have Encyclopedia Britannica's anymore, you we know. Have Google. So like I like, yeah, that's it. I mean, I remember back in the day, you have a book report, you're gonna like, you're like in the, you know, in the library scanning through the Britannica. Now you just type it into Google, or you open or the Queen's English. The Queen's English. <laughs> yeah. Crack it open. That's right. That's right. Um, so I think what um, what comes through so clearly in this book is that every term and every story is is expressed with so much respect and so much love and um but in the in the process of creating something you you're figuring out what your intention is and sometimes you can come up against a few you know a a few tensions in a final in a final product as you're going through the creative process um and so I'm just curious if there were any challenges or tensions that you encountered while working on this book, you know, like in any conversations or just aha moments, like anything like that. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, you know what? For, well, first I have to say I was so supported doing this dictionary um, and it took 15 years because I kept putting it down. <laughs> yeah. Also because there's just well, more Well, you're terms, a busy lady. But- <laughs> but well also I didn't realize what I was getting myself into you know what I mean yeah. um it just became yeah. bigger and bigger and it, it started to become bigger than me but I was truly supported and when I say supported um support comes in many ways support is there to um congratulate you and affirm you and support is also there to affirm you but help you right so I want to say that this dictionary has gone through so many sensitivity reads within the last 15 years um and mm-hmm. It will and and as I create other editions, you know, hopefully um, I will. But it will continue to go through sensitivity reads. That is the most important thing. Um, yeah, I was I was very adamant about making sure this book felt authentic. Um, it people felt celebrated, people felt heard and seen. Period. That that yeah. is the goal. Um, yeah. And if there was any time that uh, I felt that, you know. I want to do more. I want to be more inclusive. I strive to do that. I I, I, I went to seek um, the sources, um, the references, the guidance to listen, 
um, because that's what I wanted to do. So whether that set me back or not, I didn't care because I needed to make sure that it was the most authentic it could be. It can, it was the most inclusive it could be, right? So, um, and that even happened when, when I was with my publisher, um, you know, during Sensitivity Reads, wanting to make sure that, you know, it felt inclusive. And we have to understand too, yeah. You know, language just changed so draft it it evolves. It doesn't change. It evolves yeah. and it grows. Um, yeah. And and ideas, some things that may felt right before, just may not feel right now, right? And I want it to. Grow, yeah. I wanted this dictionary to grow with that change. So yeah. um, I don't call them setbacks, but you know, time did come in to make sure that the dictionary again was inclusive, to make sure that everyone felt great, everyone felt heard, that those usage notes were. I love yeah. these usage notes because it is because of the <laughs> usage notes that I feel, you know, gives the dictionary its stamp of approval, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. it's not just about the term. It's not just about how do you use it, but what are those other aspects about the term? Does it hurt? Does it affirm? Does it empower? Does it, um, is it an umbrella term that not everybody wants to use? I needed to make mm -hmm. sure all of that information was in there. So I wouldn't yeah. call it setbacks. I just would say, yeah. you know, the pace slowed down sometimes because I just had to get it right. You know, um, yeah. I had to get it right. And if I, and if it went through a sensitivity read and there was, you know, um, questions about something or, you know, someone else said, Hey, could it possibly be this? I always listened and I always made sure, mm -hmm. you know, I listened to multiple people because I also want to say like, yeah. our stories aren't monolithic, right? We, we experience yeah. life differently. And, and that was the most important thing. I want to bring all the, as many experiences as possible to this dictionary. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I was tired of seeing things in this one focus in this one view. I needed this to have the multiple views, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think it was it was the support, making sure that it was thorough, it was inclusive, and I keep saying inclusive because that that word is empowering to me. You know, it's inclusive that it has language from the ballroom scene and the leather community, that it has language yeah. from the white gay community and the black same gender loving community, from the black lesbian community yeah. to the AAPI queer community. You know, that's inclusivity to me. That shows the, yeah. di the diversity that we truly live in. That's what normality is to me. Um, and I, that's what I wanted to, you know, push with the dictionary. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, and I think that's what's so wonderful about it. There were so many times where it's, you can, there will be a definition, there will be the usage note, and there's always, a, there will always be something additional where you'll say, not everybody necessarily identifies this way you can you can learn more here about the other about the other possibilities or some people might might not use any of these terms mm -hmm. like i think that's really helpful um just to say that and in that in itself is inclusive to say listen we don't there are people who don't like the word queer and mm -hmm. i you know i myself have, have i feel like i've started to use it as a catch-all but there are some people who don't like it like it's i guess the lesson is like you just don't ever make the assumption and that's there are right. ways yeah. to ask you can ask about someone's pronouns. You can ask, you know, mm. how, yeah, all of those yeah. things. And that's the biggest, the yeah, and that's one of the biggest things I talk about in the dictionary in the introduction, right smack in the beginning, is that your identity is yours, purely yours. Yep. And, and whatever words you use to identify yourself and how you use those words is yours. And, and we yep. have to respect that, you know. We are yep. different. Our experiences are different. How we interpret things are different. And that is valid, you know. A lot of people say, well, it's a dictionary. It's, you know, I thought we need a definition. Well, we do have definitions, plural, you know, or we mm -hmm. will have a definition yep. and that's fine, but it does not negate the possibility of otherness. It just does. It doesn't, you know, right. we, we are vast, we are dynamic, we are complex. And I think the whole notion that we're learning, whether we like it or not, is that there's no boxes here. There's no binaries no. here. You know, it's way beyond. Nope. You know, I know it may right. feel, feel comfortable to say, oh, okay, it's either this or that, but that's not life. That's not, that's not identity. That's not human identity. Right. It's not this or that. Right. It's this with that right. and that and this, you know? And that's, right. again, that's what makes us vibrant. That's what makes us flourish, flourish you know? Um, and that's what I try to capture in the dictionary. Well, well done. <laughs> um, a couple of my other favorite things I love, and I'm going to show my uh, page here. So in addition to so many definitions, usage notes, being able to use it in a sentence, also very helpful. 
for anyone who might be grammatically challenged. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of these other sort of like little interstitial things. This one in particular speaks to me. This is called um, the, the lesbian spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated that like through all of these terms, when you look at them together, you just sort of see the myriad ways that lesbians in particular for this one, that they show up in the world. And so I started looking at it and, you know, um, I'm like, well, gosh, I don't know. I don't know which one describes me. There's so many. <laughs> I thought, is it like, am I, you know, am I some way, you know, there have been times where I've said like, I'm a, I'm a, a lesbian that sometimes identifies as a gay man and then bisexual on Tuesdays, you know, like it could be, but I think that that's the, that's the plethora of things, like how we all identify. And that's just really what comes through in this book. I think, and I don't know, but like looking on it, I'm probably somewhere between a soft, low femme and a chapstick lesbian. I, I don't it. know though. That okay. could change. And it evolves, right? This book yeah. will evolve. The language evolves. We evolve, you know? So, so how about, how about I read a little bit of this? Okay, here Please, we let's, me. let's do it. Okay, so <laughs> the lesbian spectrum. As early as the 1940s, when women were first allowed to go out to bars without the company of men, lesbian women began to establish their own community, finding visibility and acceptance in speakeasies and dive bars. Some queer women preferred stereotypic feminine garb, while others dressed in starch shirts and trousers. Thus, the butch femme binary was born. Over time, the binary evolved into a myriad identities along the butch femme spectrum. While some of the commonly identifiers shown here, so we're talking about here, um, there are countless ways for <laughs> queer women to uh, express their identity. So we have, mm -hmm. if we go from like femme, and this is the fun thing. So it says, FYI, lots yeah. of language in the queer and the Queen's English is um, interpretation. And you can reformat these ones that I'm going to give you. But if I go from yep. femme to footch to butch, we have, so we have femme, high yep. femme, diva femme, lipstick lesbian, hard femme, soft low femme, chapstick lesbian, tomboy, stem. Butch, boy, soft butch, ag, dyke, soft stud, butch, stud, stone butch, bull dyke, butch. <laughs> so this is just again yep. the myriad of ways. Um, uh, they call it the lesbian spectrum, and it's just, you know, it's just ways of expressing your identity. You know, um, mm -hmm. and some people use these words, and some people don't. Absolutely not. Right. Um, but there's right. there's a lot of times there's fun. There's fun language that. Um, happens within the community and you know in the lesbian community it's the lesbian spectrum and you know in the gay community it's it's the animal kingdom right so a lot of times mm -hmm. you know you'll hear about bears and otters and wolves and twinks and twonks and you know and and going yeah. on but these are like body labels that are commonly used um, in the in the gay community particularly the white gay community um, that are that are fun. They're fun. You know what I mean. Yeah. They're not. They're yep. not to say, oh, this is what you are. But however, there are some members like the bears. They are proud bears, and so you know about yes. the bear community, which um, mm -hmm. and 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 um, in Provincetown, I think next week or the week after is you know oh, it's bear, bear week. week or bear yeah. Fight. So yes. so yes. you know it. <laughs> It, they're, they're body labels, but also there's empowerment in that, you know, the bear community, yeah. they are, you know, very, they are about empowering the brotherhood of bears. So, yeah. Yeah. And there were all, there's also, you have all those terms about, there are, there are even labels for people who like to hang out with a certain type. Like, I forget what the term right. is. There's a Ursula. Group of, it's like, there's Os yes. Ursula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Goldilocks. Right. Yeah. Yes. All <laughs> Friends of those with things. the bears. Like, I, right. I, I I love it, and I feel like that just is a way to continue to just create connection and and community um, amongst people. And and if people feel like they don't, you know, and I I feel like there was a, a part where you talked about people who don't want a label, and mm -hmm. they feel like, hey, I don't this this feels like it might, might put me in a box, even if that's not the intention. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like that was really powerful as well. That there are some people who just say, you know, I'm no label. Mm -hmm. um, do you so, want to talk a little bit more yeah, about that? Yeah, I would love to talk about that. Yeah. I'm actually going to read it from the dictionary. So, um, okay. And I can, you know, also bring in, um, so this is the no label page, but I can bring in a little oh, bit about, that, Chloe. Um, so page 223. 
223. No, okay. Mm-hmm. So this, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, just researching for the Queen's English, you know, over the 15 years. You know, I really appreciate um, my friends, my dance community, my theater community, because um, that's where it started. You know, it started within yeah. our community um, and people just really sharing who they are and being very transparent mm-hmm. about their journeys. Um, about language again that's affirming that's empowering but also language that could hurt or or present some type of malice um and i remember i oh actually um my first girlfriend but um some other people this whole idea of no label you know very Mm -hmm. very adamant to say you know i don't i don't do labels you know labels don't make me feel affirmed or empowered i don't like being put in a box um, and this is a way of thinking and that is and definitely it's valid. I understand, you know, and I Absolutely. feel like even with like the no label, I think maybe some some people can identify that with queer because it's like queer. I'm not in a box, you know, I'm not in a box saying I'm a mm-hmm. lesbian or that I'm bisexual or that I'm pansexual or that, you know, I'm trans or that I'm non-binary. I'm just queer. Right. But some people feel yeah. like, you know, no label. Let me just exist. And um, yeah. I think that's really empowering as well. Um, and I talked to a dear friend, um, and I actually quoted him, but I'm going to read no label adjective describing Great. a person okay. who does not identify with any gender or sexuality labels. I don't have a label. I would like no label. I feel that one of the joys of being a gay man is that I can have all the masculine and macho stuff and also be a queen freedom to be no apologies. And that's my good friend James that I quoted. And it says, what more info think a label against using sexuality stereotypes? So that's Mm -hmm. a little bit about no label. Um, And and I I love to say this all the time. Like, you know, how you identify is personal. It is your journey. It is who you are and should always be valid. And if even if it even if there's ebb and flow in that. And the words you use to express who you are, those are yours as well. And how you interpret that, that's yours as well. And I think that's yeah. the education of the dictionary. Well, here, here are words that can help you along that journey. And, you know, mm-hmm. on Monday, you may feel like this. And on Friday, you may feel like that. That's okay. Or year 10, you feel like this. But year 50, you feel like that. And that's absolutely yeah. okay. And so the Queen's English here is like, like it did for me. It just, it helped me really affirm who I am and, and helps me see the evolution of, of, of who I've come to be and who I possibly will become to be later, you know? Um, so well, you it's tell about, that story yeah. in the introduction, I believe mm-hmm. about when you, in the beginning, when you were, and I, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you no. tell that story that you were having a conversation when you were sort of, you were start having some of these like uh, recognitions of, of uh, realizations about your sexuality mm-hmm. and who you might be. And, uh, and, uh, and you said, well, why do I need a label to a friend? And they said, yeah. I think this is going to help you live your truth, like really yeah. to stand in that light and, li- and live your truth and your joy. Yeah. And that was incredible to hear. I don't know if so I'm going to read about this. that moment um, as well. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. You read it. <laughs> so it says, why do we need labels? Mm. And here it is. We don't need labels. Um, it's like I said, it's, it's, <laughs> It's whatever makes you feel empowered. But I said, years ago, a close friend asked how I wanted to be perceived. He knew I had been with both men and women, and he was testing me. I told him I was open to identifying however I saw fit and asked him, why do I need a label? He replied, you don't need a label. I just recommend you live in your truth. His words prompted me to challenge myself. Over time, I gained the courage and confidence to love myself and the many layers that shape me. Research for the Queen's English has provided me with a new understanding of human identity, and as a result, I feel empowered by who I am. I believe that outward expression and feelings of attraction are two inherent components of every human, gay, straight, cis, trans, and beyond. These two ideas of expression and attraction show the layered depth of each person's existence. While our unique expression and attraction are labels, are used by society to categorize or even divide people. How we express our identity to the world and the spectrum of attraction we feel for others actually unite us. Our similarities and our differences unite us. And as a result, labels do too. Let's celebrate that. <laughs> oh, I love that story. I Me love too. that story. Um, I just want to remind folks, we are not quite getting opening up the floor yet but i believe i saw it in the chat if anybody in out there um has 
a question for Chloe, go ahead and drop it in the ask a question box. I'll be checking it periodically. We'd love to hear from you, hear different terms that stood out or a particular passage um, that really spoke to you. We, we want to hear about it. So you have a few more minutes if you want to drop that in the question box. Um, if we can get to something a little bit more fun now, okay. one of my favorite <laughs> terms that I did, not that, that this, not that this isn't fun, but that, that was the wrong, that was the wrong thing, but maybe we'll just be, we're going to be a little more cheeky, if yeah. you will. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, one of the, uh, one of the many terms that I didn't know, there, and there are several, like, I mean, eye opening, this book was, um, was, um, femme flagging. Fem flagging. Fem <laughs> flagging. This was not a term that I knew. And so, mm-hmm. Chloe, if you want to read the, de- the, 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 the definition, and then we okay. can talk a little bit about it. Because okay. this, re- <laughs> I was, my Let's mind was blown it. When, when, when I figured out that this existed. I wish it's I could, like, flip through 19. the dictionary as I look for the word so you all could. I know. Everyone can, can see, see how um, colorful okay. and. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so fem flagging. <laughs> Here we go. That's the verb. Here we go. A coded system used by female or fem queers to sub to subly I'm sorry. Let's start over. Okay. <laughs> start over. Verb. Start over. <laughs> A coded system used by female or fem queers to subtly signal their queerness to others. The act of painting particular fingernails symbolic colors is most commonly used. The term Finger flagging can also be used. (laughs) One more info. Think how to spot a femme in the wild, wild world. (laughs) (laughs) And so when I, when I first, when I read the word, I was not expecting that definition. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I thought, because my, I have a dirty mind sometimes. I'm thinking of something else. (laughs) And so then of course I started thinking, well, first of all, so when I was first coming out, I was like, I wish I knew this. Because if I was ever out in the world, I would be like, does this person, do they like me? Do they want to be my friend? I don't know. And if I had known to like, look at fingernails, like maybe I would yeah. have had a clue. Yeah. And then and I did it. You know, know, it's the color. It's the color. It's mm-hmm. also which fingernails, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's interesting and because have... thin flagging um, is also reminiscent to the hanky code. So the hanky code is. Which I read about uh, with they yes, put in their used, back pocket. Mm-hmm, that is used mm-hmm. in, you know, the gay, bisexual, queer, male uh, world community. And right. then flagging is, you know, in the queer, female, fem world. Right. And I thought to myself then, I was like, well, is it at all a double entendre? Is it what kind of queer you are and what fingers you like to use? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm being very cheeky in this women and children <laughs> discussion, but that's me. Chloe knows. She knows. She knew what the risk is when she asked me to do this. <laughs> a good time. A good time. But yes. A good time. And I think this is time. also, you know, even if I, even if I just, you know, talk about the, the, the F's on, on these two pages from fem, yeah. you know, to fem daddy, to fem dom, to fem flagging, to yep. fem for fem, fem of center, yep. fem phobia, fem queen, fem top, fierce, fetish, finger, uh, yeah. finger flagging, fire, fish, fish, um, fish wife, you know, five year tuna, flannel, you know, it's just, it goes again to show the diversity of, of language. Um, and yeah. I just thought it was amazing. Why not have a tool, first of all, that celebrates, but also that empowers and then also that educates, yeah. you know, about yeah. the spectrum of humanity, but also just focuses on the history and the identity and pride of the LGBTQI plus community, you know, and all of its vastness and all of it and all of its diversity and intersectionality. I hadn't seen that before. So, and that, that's, that's what I was working towards. Yep. And I think, you know, one of the reflections I was sort of having upon um, reading this book and, and, and just having my eyes open to all of this, this richness um, and the myriad of terms and people and, and lifestyles and, and rituals, all of these things. Um, you know, I, I felt that prior, I, become a, I became a mom um, less than two years ago, so it's a new thing. But I wonder, like, I feel like I'm experiencing my queerness in a whole new way now that I have a daughter. And it's, you know, different politics of the playground and mm-hmm. having special conversations with her daycare that to make sure they're using inclusive language, all of these things. Um, 
I'm experiencing it in a new, and you might be able to, might be able to hear. I think she just came in the house, but um, I'm experiencing these things in a new way and, and experiencing, you know, some more microaggressions, like more than I did before. But I, what I love about this is that I now have a resource for maybe not right away and maybe not all of the definitions, but a resource to share with my daughter, Frankie, as she's growing up to say, this is, this is the community that we have, we have brought you into. And isn't it a wild, wonderful and beautiful one. And I hope that, that, um, that it's helpful to give her pride and joy and, and understanding. Aww, so that's thank beautiful. you for that. <laughs> thank, thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah. that that's, that's special. And um, I want to also say the dictionary is, is they, we have um, these interstitial spreads, right? Um, so every mm-hmm. letter is going to be introduced with something, whether it be an illustration or a spread. And yep. this one particularly um, is queer parents and the family dynamic, right? Um, and yep. it's, it says it's time to celebrate. Oh, yeah. LGBTQ family <laughs> day. So, no, it, it dives into, you know, that is a unique experience, right? Um, a unique mm-hmm. experience for you, a unique experience for Frankie, um, particularly when she gets older. Um, right. You know, when you have queer parents, same-sex parents, and just what that family dynamic looks like, it's a unique mm-hmm. experience. Um, and truth be told, there are still um, equality and rights that we're, you know, still fighting for um, when yep. it comes to, you know, adoption and uh, being, you know, the legal parent, um, yeah. um, and just many other things, you know, that, you know, unfortunately, but you may encounter that type of, um, right. dismissiveness or language that is not, uh, empowering and inclusive. So, um, mm-hmm. that was important to me too, to again, dive into those topics, um, and have yeah. it part of the dictionary. So that way those who are parents or, or want to be parents, um, and that are part of a same sex couple or a queer couple, you know, you have Mm -hmm. information, you know, of of how you can navigate this. And also those who are not, you know, can understand what these unique experiences look like and and have more compassion and sensitivity to that. Right. Because I think, you know, I think a lot of people um, assume they make the assumption, not folks in in, in the queer community, or at least not all of them, that because we have, we, you know, uh, we've got marriage equality that everything is fine and everything is hunky dory. And I'm like, well, we still have a lot further to go. And that was Mm -hmm. really only, you know, men have been benefiting one part of the community and not a whole lot of others. So, right. um, And we actually talk about that in our, um, in our inside the Queens English conversation, Yes, which will be posted soon. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so we have a, a, a question from the group if, if you'd like to yes. uh, hear it. So it says, we hear a lot about the lack of diversity within the publishing industry. Did you receive any pushback or have any issues during the editorial or publishing process, especially as you strived to make the book as inclusive as you did? I think that's a great question. Wow. Okay. Woo! All right. So, <laughs> you know, it's about transparency. Um this is a very unique book. It is a very unique book. So first, I have to say thank you to my literary agent, um, Leela. And I have to also say thank you to my publisher, Clarkson Potter, and my editor, Sarah. I, I have to say thank you because I know how unique this book is. I know how different it is because it just hasn't been done before. So I understand the risk that, you know, um, the publishing um uh, my publisher took with with taking this book and i appreciate it i have to say that first however i cannot um negate to say that there were challenges because um because our community is very unique and you know we're talking about the spectrum of identity we're talking about sexual orientation we're talking about gender identity gender expression and this is not something that could be uh boxed in and so I, I did advocate to make sure that it's not boxed in. I will say that. And I will also say, as you can tell, I'm a black woman, right? Um, and the industry has struggled with, you know, representation from black women, black people, people of color, period. And so, yes, I, I had... Um, I had to also advocate to make sure things 
were in its most authentic form, that it wasn't whitewashed, that, you know, um, I did have to battle with that. I did have to um, show my sources <laughs> as to where certain black language came came from. And that was that that was that hurt. I'm not going to lie. Um because that's what I mean about appropriation. It's to the point where we forget the history of it and it causes erasure. You know, just because mm -hmm. being a black woman in my black culture, um, and we understand racism, we understand marginalization, we understand oppression. So, you know, there might not be dictionaries prior to that says this where this word comes from. And possibly the Queen's English could be the first to do that because, you know, black culture is handed down, you know, verbally. Um, but I want to say thank goodness because I live in New York and thank goodness for the Schomburg Center um, in Harlem, New York, that uh, is is a safe haven and a, a beautiful reference tool for everything black. I was able to um, to defend myself. Um, so that is a great question. You know, I will be honest, absolutely honest to say we do have um, a long way to go, but I yeah. will always always thank and appreciate you know my literary agent and my editor and clarkson potter and penguin random house for diving into this um because again you know it, it had not been done before we're talking not only about you know sexual orientation again gender identity but it's so timely so i i, I think they are very happy with the decision and i do appreciate um I do appreciate them allowing me to have the space and creativity to fight for what I want. They listened, you know, if there was pushback, yeah. they listened all the time. Um, and it was a beautiful experience because I had to learn how to advocate, um, yeah. not just because of the lack of diversity, you know, or me being black or me, you know, talking about LGBTQI plus issues, but just had to advocate as an artist, as a creative to say, like, this is my vision. And yes, you're a big publishing house but just listen to me for a second because right now you know i'm the i'm the specialist in this you know i'm the specialist when it comes right. to the language and the diversity and then inclusion you know i spent 15 years diving into this so you know just listen and i think that's the biggest thing that we can all do in general we have to listen more when we don't when we don't know something you know we have to open our ears and listen or we, when we don't know enough of something we have to open our ears and listen and, you yeah. know, this dictionary, I, I will say, came from listening, came from listening, came from learning, came from wanting to understand more, came from pushing an ego to the side. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So thank you for asking that question. And I, do, I always like to be transparent. I think that's the most important thing. Um, and I thank my publisher. I thank my editor. And I thank my agent for, again, you know, doing this with me. But we do have a long way to go when it comes to diversity, when it comes to hearing voices that are not that are not the, the primary view and focus, you know, and those voices just happen to be black voices and AAPI voices and Latino, Latina, Latinx voices and indigenous voices and queer voices and gay voices and two spirit voices. You know, I can go on and on, um, but yep. we have to stop negating the true spectrum of identity and 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 have that be have us be a part of a more inclusive society yeah well and i also want to say um and i hope um i think you were saying how timely your book is and i do think that that is is so true that at a time where finally we have mainstream programs like RuPaul's Drag Race, like Pose, where there, these terms are being used and now and 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 appropriate and then appropriated. But now, when everybody is throwing these terms around, we actually have this mm -hmm. tool to go back and say, "Oh, that wasn't so. The, that drag queen isn't the person that like came up yeah. with this term. This was actually this originated yeah. in something else." And and I hope that those that those types of things, like the fact that there there all are these mainstream things, that that was able to like give you the extra support that you that you needed to say this is timely, this is needed. I know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about, and I'm so happy that you had the fortitude to do that and to like stick to yeah. your guns, for lack yeah. of a better term or and a it's better, scary. Uh, better <laughs> phrase. It is it's scary. scary. It's scary. It's scary to do that. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate the environment I was in that I could yeah. do that and it was welcomed 
and I think we all learned, you know, along the way. But I, like, yeah. I cannot, you know, I cannot continue to say thank you to you know Clarkson Potter, but Sarah, my editor. I mean, she was so passionate about this, and and we all learned, you know, we all learned. So this is kind of like this is a win for everyone because we're yeah. all still learning, even with this, you know, baby we created because it's, it's absolutely yeah. beautiful and it's such a great way to just engage and learn. Um, yeah. so yeah, I, I'm really appreciative of, of the experience. So, um, one, uh, I, I have one last question and we do still have mm -hmm. time for potentially another question for, uh, from the group. If anyone wants to drop one in the box. Um, and maybe this is like, a, it's a little bit light and it's a little bit more open-ended, but what do you think ultimately is your hope for the book and, and mm -hmm. beyond this and beyond? Do you have any ideas of like mm -hmm. where it could I go? Always, what's yeah. next? You well, know? I always, I always said, um, I always said, I just want it. And I still say this now, even when I'm in my, um, my my meetings with my publisher i said i just want to get it into the right hands you know i want to get it yeah. into the hands that need it the hands that want it um you know i want to get into you know business leaders i want to get into politicians i want to get into the hands of religious leaders you know i want to mm -hmm. get it into the hands of parents that need to uh that really truly desire to learn more about their child but they don't necessarily have the resources or to yeah. the individual who wants to stand firm in who they are, but just needs a little support and words to help navigate that journey. Um, so I always say, I just really want it to get into hands, but I am proud to say that this dictionary has like wings and flying so many places that I could have only imagined. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's doing just that. And so I always, always share like, you know, buy a book and gift a book because yeah you know, we, we all need it we really really do it's just a beautiful it's a beautiful celebration of humanity um mm -hmm. because again like I, I i had this saying that i just anyone who opened it i don't care where you you know identify on the spectrum that you could uh relate to at least two words because you know it's about identity and your relationship identity and your romantic identity um are all part of that too so, yeah. you know, I just, yeah, it's just getting into the hands of those who need it, want it, desire it. Um, and I'll, I'm also happy to say that there's the UK version. Um, it came yes. out June 17th. So yes. now, you know, yes. in the UK and <laughs> Ireland, um, I'm excited. It's, I, th yeah. I think it's even in Australia. So, you know, it's going, it, you know, yeah. it's, it's going places that, I may never go, but I think that I'm, I feel very proud. Like it's a, it, it was my gift, right? It, I, I still, I feel like it's my gift to like my LGBTQI plus community, but you know, we're, I feel like we're all here for a purpose and this just happened to be one of mine. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, we talk about the, the power of, of the arts and media and books and that mm -hmm. people get to see themselves reflected and what you're able to do with this book that we're we're not going to be able to do on on television or in movies for a long time is like this is just so thorough and there are so many things that like you're saving lives that somebody mm -hmm. somewhere is gonna be like oh this this is a thing this is uh, this legitimizes the way that i feel and who i am when i when i'm not necessarily seeing that on television mm -hmm. or around me um, and I think that that's like so powerful and so beautiful. Oh, so thank you. You know what? I guess closing out, I want to actually yeah. read um, my dedication. So, yes, I uh, read a dedication and I would love to share it. This dic dictionary is dedicated to all of you who take the courageous path each day to completely be yourselves. You encourage us all to love our inner beauty and ideas even when faced with the challenge of not being embraced by others. I write to affirm and remind you that you are exceptional and more than enough. Thank you for opening your life and world to me unselfishly and allowing me to share the essence of your words. Love, Clilly. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Amanda, for this time. Um, I've Thank loved this you conversation. for having me. Thank you for always me being too. so supportive. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you, you, Sarah. That was such a lovely conversation. I love virtual events that include friends because you can just feel the warmth. Um, so thank you for <laughs> such a wide ranging, informative, um, beautiful conversation. If you haven't purchased the book, buy one for you and a friend. Um, the box to uh, the button to buy the book is at the bottom of the screen. Um, and we are just so thrilled to you know, have you here. And um, thank you all so much for being here and joining us. And um, if you know someone who missed this event, don't worry. Um, it was reported, um, and anyone, anywhere can watch it anytime um, at this link. So thank you all, and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so Happy much. Pride. Happy, Happy Pride. pride. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.